what to do now. <laughs> That's what Jakob Ingebrigtsen has to say after doing this. Him, but it's been run in the way that he'd like to get back to, and that is with a win. Hocker coming through strongly. For While others choose to rest for long periods of time after major competitions, Ingebrigtsen does not. I'm not a guy that uh, enjoys resting, so uh, I'm not probably gonna not uh, rest too much. Well, it's not surprising that the Norwegian long distance runner dominates the competition more often than not. In fact, very recently, in yet another major global event, the Diamond League final, Jakob made sure to leave his competitors behind. Before that, he already had a very successful Olympic run. Okay, very successful might not be that appropriate since he suffered a loss in one event, but since he bounced back quite well and won a gold in another, successful would probably suffice. Jakob admitted that he hit the wall and got his timing wrong, which led to a shock upset in the 1,500 meter final at the Olympics. I opened with a 54 second lap, he explained. That wasn't the plan at all. And that's all it took to lose a medal in the event. My plan was to win, but it didn't go according to plan, he added, because it didn't. He made sure to stick to his guns so everything would go to plan. Translation, he will win his next race, the men's 5,000 meter. He planned, executed, and delivered. Inga Brigston was in cruise control over the final stretch of the 5,000 meter, beating nearest rival Ronald Quemoy of Kenya by nearly two seconds with a time of 13 minutes, 13.66 seconds. Jakob took the lead for the first time with half a lap to go and turned on the afterburners to race home to add the Olympic gold to his two world titles in the event. As he wrote in an Instagram post, leaving Paris empty-handed was never an option. But after his fourth place finish in the 1,500 meter in Paris, he seemed more determined than ever to reclaim his dominance in the event. So he went to Switzerland to do just that. At the Diamond League meeting in Lausanne, Jakob Ingebrigtsen blew away America's Cole Hawker with a dominant performance. Outrunning the new Olympic champion, Jakob sprinted to an emphatic victory at Stade Olympique de la Pontes in 3 minutes 27.83 seconds. Ingebrigtsen flying down the home straight. There's others chasing down for the lesser places, but watch the clock. It's about 3.28. In fact, it's an amazing record. Shortly after that, he went to the Silesia Diamond League and, surprise, surprise, he won. This time in the men's 3,000 meter sprint. What's more, the middle distance superstar set the track alight as he stormed into the history books with a new world record. At the Silesian Stadium in Chorzow, the Norwegian took the record into uncharted territory, churning out the last two laps in 57.46 and 55.47 respectively. 1 minute and 52.93 seconds for the last 800 meters to break away from Ethiopia's Berihu Aragawi and take a significant chunk of 3.12 seconds off Komen's enduring record. And watch that clock! The world record! 720.67 is going to be smashed here by the Norwegian! It's a world record! Inga Brigtsen chopped nearly 4 seconds off the previous mark Kenya's Daniel Komen set back in 1996. That's a 28-year world record broken by the 24-year-old Norwegian. If that's not mind-blowing enough, get this. That record is the longest standing world record in an individual men's track event. He wasn't, however, as successful in Zurich when he once again ran in the 1,500 meter. Instead, Jared Nugusa was the surprise winner in the men's 1,500 meter as Jakob Ingebrigtsen was caught on the final straight at the Zurich Diamond League. Jakob, who had three wins out of eight across the distance this term and led heading into the final stretch at the Letzigrund, hadn't been able to fend off his American competitor. Nugusa steadily chipped away at Jakob's advantage and pipped him to the line. This does not phase the Norwegian track star, though. A relatively good result. Would have liked to be, uh, of course, winning and a little bit better. Uh, all things considered, a good, good battle with, with Jared. When asked about what he learned from that race, he said this. Even on my worst day, I can still uh, at least be second. At the end of the day. It's about, you know, doing my best and uh, hopefully get a lot of good fight with, uh, fights with the other athletes. 
So today is uh, a good race, but looking forward to the, uh, the final in, uh, in Brussels. Brussels. Now, that's the best time as any to reclaim his dominance in the 1500. And would you even be surprised to hear that he did? Even in chilly conditions and a rain-soaked track, the world's best mid-distance runners gave us one final show in Brussels as the Norwegian got a little revenge on Cole Hawker and Jared Nuguse. Jakob Ingebrigtsen, Kenya's Timothy Cheruyot and Hawker were the main contenders down the final stretch, but roles were reversed this time around for Ingebrigtsen and the Olympic champion. In a hectic 1,500-meter Diamond League final in Brussels, Norway's Jakob Ingebrigtsen quashed any remaining doubts about his dominance. A few days before he celebrated his 24th birthday, Jakob clocked 3 minutes and 30.37 seconds in a tactical event to wreak vengeance on Olympic champion Cole Hawker and bronze medalist Jared Nuguz, the American duo who kept him off the podium in Paris. The win marks his third consecutive Diamond League trophy in the men's 1,500-meter event. This particular race was slightly notable in that Inga Brigtsen hung behind American Jared Nuguz until 500 meters remained and then nearly got taken out by pacer Boaz Kiprugat when he tried to pass. Once Inga Brigtsen hit the front with a lap to go, Nugusa got tangled up in a collision of his own and, while managing to stay on his feet, got shuffled out of contention for the win and ultimately finished sixth. Needless to say, Jakob finished the season on a high note. Okay, technically he didn't, since he made the trip from Brussels to Copenhagen to make his half marathon debut. His attendance was officially confirmed just a day before the event, when the Copenhagen half marathon organizers announced the news on their website. I'm looking forward to test myself in the half marathon for the first time in Copenhagen, Inga Brixen said on the website. Normally this is a distance that would suit my training very well, but after a long season on the track working towards the 1,500 meter, it's exciting to see if I even can reach the finish line. For days, rumors have persisted that Inga Brixen would make his half marathon debut in Copenhagen. Throughout the Brussels Diamond League, including in both the press conference and mixed zone, Jakob kept his cards close to his chest. After claiming the 1,500 meter crown in Brussels, Inga Brixen teased his 2024 campaign wasn't totally over, posting on Instagram, what a great way to end the season, or, because of this, it didn't really come as much of a surprise when he was confirmed to be a participant in the event. When an Olympic gold medalist chooses to run in Copenhagen, it's because the city, the course, and the audience deliver something special, Dort Vibjerg, CEO of Sparta Athletics and Running said. So Jakob's presence was highly anticipated at the Copenhagen Half Marathon. However, it was there that he learned the hard way that 13 miles of racing on tired legs doesn't come easy. Simply put, Inga Brixen's Half Marathon debut in Copenhagen fell apart after 10 kilometers. Passing that point with the leaders in 27. 27, he pulled up sharply, grimacing in pain with the effort. Soon after, he resumed running and rumbled home in 63, 13. Up ahead, victory went to Sebastian Sawe as the Kenyan outsprinted Ugandan Jacob Kiplomo to win in 58, 05. Inga Brixen said afterward, 21 kilometers is definitely too long. I'm definitely not going to try again for a couple of years. It's fun, but tough. He also made sure to thank the crowd for helping him complete the race. It was just amazing. I would never have been able to finish and definitely not that fast if it wasn't for the crowd. So many people lining the course and they were cheering for me and the rest of the guys. A great event and great experience even though it's extremely tough. At the end of the day, more races, more chances of winning. The same goes for other athletes. Watch this to see for yourself. 